Hey everyone and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. What is the one thing a lot of car enthusiasts aren't typically happy about when it comes to vehicles around $28,000 to $35,000? Well, it really just comes down to the fact that subcompact and compact crossovers are a dime a dozen. Usually you get urbanized vehicles that you're not going to be taking off road or you get more civilianized compact crossovers that pretty much every American buys. There's just not a lot of ruggedness or masculinity when it comes to this price range and segment. Well, those days are over as we're taking a look at the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport and already this vehicle right here is changing the game. Now I have been trying for weeks, if not months, to figure out why I'm so excited about the Bronco Sport. Why I've been waiting so long to test drive this vehicle and experience it for myself. I think it really comes down to the fact that it's not a true subcompact or compact crossover, but rather it's kind of like a baby Land Rover. I think that's what I'm gonna go with for this review. It's a baby Land Rover. Can't be compared to a Jeep Compass, can't be compared to a Kia Seltos or Nissan Rogue Sport, despite being a very similar size to those vehicles. And also, I would definitely not say it's a Jeep Renegade competitor. This vehicle is far too rugged, but also it's a little more expensive, and I think it's cooler as well. So in this video, we're gonna take a good long look at the Ford Bronco Sport and see why. If you don't want to be like a typical millennial driving a subcompact crossover around town or the urban areas of the United States, and you're looking for something a little more rugged, adventurous, something that you can take off-road, then maybe going with a Ford Bronco Sport might be a great decision. Now before I get in this review, I'd like to thank Acton Ford in Acton, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review and also inviting me down here to check this vehicle out. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Ford inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. When Ford announced they were axing the Fiesta, Focus, Fusion, and Taurus last decade, many were unsure how the future of the lineup would unfold, and how the American manufacturer would make a crossover dominant product line differ from rivals. It wasn't until sometime around 2018 when speculation grew that the Ford Bronco would make a return. But unlike its predecessor, a smaller, more affordable crossover sharing the same name would also accompany Ford's most popular off-roader. The Bronco Sport is the latest addition to Ford's growing lineup, sitting between the Escape and Edge. But unlike its siblings, it offers a rugged and adventurous personality that's lacking in the subcompact and compact crossover segments. Starting off with pricing, the Bronco Sport we have today comes in at $32,660. But with optional packages included, you're looking at spending right around $38,000 for a fully loaded Badlands. Despite wearing the Bronco badge, the Sport is actually closely related to the Ford Escape, as it's underpinned by the same platform despite looking more off-road worthy and being much smaller. In terms of dimensions, the Bronco Sport is about 8 inches shorter than the Escape, but sits higher while also being more practical when it comes to interior headroom thanks to the squared off design. While many journalists are quick to pin the Bronco Sport against subcompact crossovers like the Jeep Renegade and Honda HRV, it's actually similar in size to the Jeep Compass, Nissan Rogue Sport, and Kia Seltos. For ground clearance, all Bronco Sport models will have about 7.7 .7 inches of room to work with. But if you offer the 29-inch all-terrain tires, ground clearance increases to a class-leading 8.8 .8 inches. Drawing your attention immediately when staring at the Bronco Sport head-on is the retro styling and modern design elements that should translate well with Ford loyalists while also attracting new buyers to the brand. To prove that it's not your parents' crossover, you'll have two tow hook mounts for some serious off-roading. But what I can appreciate the most about the rugged road presence is that there's a purpose to the plastic cladding, and Ford didn't get carried away with it like most manufacturers do to insinuate versatility. With the Bronco Sport being delayed until next summer, the Sport is like an appetizer of things to come as this front fascia lets you know this is the smaller sibling to Ford's latest creation, with LED headlights and fog lights bringing modern aesthetics while the grille is branded with the Bronco name. 
Moving over to the side profile, the Badlands will be sitting on 17 inch carbonized gray aluminum wheels. On lower trims, 18s are optional, which may affect ride comfort. Adding some character to the Bronco Sport will be the Badlands badging on the driver and front passenger doors, with each trim receiving their own unique logo. Not surprising, the side mirrors will not be color matching and won't have integrated turn signal indicators, but you will receive blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, it's here where you'll find the only Ford badge on the Bronco Sport, which might get overlooked by many, but it's a small gesture that lets us know how important the Bronco's return is for the brand. We can all get caught up in calling this vehicle a subcompact or compact crossover, but it's from this angle where the Bronco Sport really deserves to be called an SUV, as the rear fascia is certainly more truck-like when it comes to design compared to rivals. You'll have LED taillights to once again give us a modern appearance, and overall this is one of the best looking vehicles Ford has produced in the last 20 years. Under the hood, the Bronco Sport Badlands is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that puts out 245 horsepower and 275 pound-feet of torque and is paired with an 8-speed automatic transmission. For other trims, a 1.5-liter turbocharged 3-cylinder is going to be more economical, but despite having less power, the 8-speed automatic will be more enjoyable to drive than a CVT found in competitors. Setting the Bronco Sport apart from most rivals in this segment and price range, four-wheel drive does come standard for all models, for immediate year-round versatility and off-road capability. For fuel economy, you can expect to receive right around 21 miles per gallon in the city and 26 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, you're going to have power adjustable heated leather trim seats for both the driver and passenger as part of the Badlands package, which also adds the upgraded 10-speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system, a wireless phone charging pad, power moonroof, and the heated leather-wrapped steering wheel. In front of you, between the analog gauges, a digital display is going to provide additional information, such as fuel efficiency and tire pressure monitoring. By using the buttons mounted on the steering wheel, you can scroll through different settings, and customize the display to your liking. But what really impressed me was the resolution quality, which was something I wasn't expecting. Moving over to the infotainment system, all Bronco Sport models will be equipped with an 8-inch touchscreen, with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. And standard for the Badlands will be a voice-activated navigation system. This user interface is Ford Sync 3 system, which we've gone over numerous times on the channel, and functions basically the same as every Ford model we've featured throughout the last three years. On the Badlands, a front-facing camera will be useful for when you hit the trails, or simply trying to park the Bronco Sport at the mall, as a squared-off hood design might take some time to get adjusted to. Of course, a rear backup camera with trajectory will come standard, with reverse sensing to provide additional safety. Below, you'll find the buttons and dials for your dual zone climate control, three level heated seats, and front and rear defrosters. Next to the wireless phone charging pad, you'll find a USB and USB-C input for smartphone connectivity. And as we take a look at the center console, a new feature for most Fords is the rotary dial gear shift selector to maximize as much room as possible between the two front seats. Rather than simply having a drive mode selector like every other vehicle on the market today, Ford now has GOAT modes. Nope, that's not greatest of all time, but goes over any terrain, as the Bronco Sport is more capable than any current crossover in the Ford lineup. As always, the drive mode you've selected will show up on the digital display. Exclusive to the Ford Bronco, you now have trail control, providing a cruise control of sorts for when you're off-road and you need to focus on navigating the trail. It's features like this that let us know how serious Ford really is about competing with Jeep, specifically in this segment. 
For the center storage compartment, you'll find enough room for a smartphone, and also a USB and USB-C input. And rounding out the front seating area, as mentioned before, a power moonroof will let in a lot of natural light to the interior. Now for passengers in the back, we're going to start off on the driver's side, and I adjusted the seat to someone of my height around 5'5", and I have a decent amount of legroom to work with here. I mean, compared to what I've seen uh, from other reviewers, I was expecting to be cramped myself. But I do think this totally works if you have a smaller family. We're talking kids around maybe eight, nine years old, and you're looking to go up to New Hampshire or Maine to have a nice, fun weekend getaway, maybe going camping. I think this works for someone very short. Obviously, maybe you as a driver, you might be a little taller, and that's going to affect legroom. But I, I'm actually okay with this. I'm not, I'm not disappointed at all. Again, this vehicle is the size of a Jeep Compass or a Nissan Rogue Sport. So it's not a true compact crossover by any means, and it's really close to a subcompact crossover. So this would actually be very typical. Now, surprisingly, and you don't really experience this in subcompact vehicles, but there's actually some decent placements for my feet. The center hump is not very aggressive at all, and I do think if this was just a little wider, you could fit a third person back here, practically. Now, obviously, you're not going to be fitting your friends back here that are maybe like 5'10", but if you had three very small kids, we're talking kids around maybe 8 or 9 years old, I think this could work. I'm, I'm actually a bit impressed here. Usually the third, like the center seat is completely useless. This actually right here isn't that bad. So that's actually a point for a Ford on this one. I, I just was not expecting that. Now I could adjust the passenger side a little further back, but I just think at that point we're getting to the, to, we're getting overboard here. Now the seat is adjusted further back. It's also somewhat on a recline. I still have a few inches of room to leg room to work with here. So I do think, again, keep in mind that this is a very small vehicle. It's not a compact crossover, so I do think maybe if you're looking for something a little bigger, wait for uh, the true Bronco that's coming out. But this right here is totally acceptable. Another cool feature about the Ford Bronco Sport is the compartment underneath the passenger side seat. So you can fit smaller items, such as maybe an iPad or an iPhone. So if you are leaving your vehicle unattended while you climb a mountain and you want to have your electronics underneath and away from people uh, where they can't see things, you can leave them right there and you'll have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be stealing your more valuable items. Also back here, you will get two rear air vents to go along with a plug outlet, which is a bit of a surprise, because usually you'd have a 12 volt outlet and also a USB input. But if you use this vehicle for its intended purposes, then you're not going to be plugging in your smartphone to charge it. You're going to be using that plug outlet for something else. So I totally get that. And also for a vehicle of this size and its price range, it's not a bit of a surprise to see that there's no three level heated outboard seats. And then rounding out, the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, of course you will get a lift gate. It's not powered, uh, which is to be expected for a more rugged crossover. However, you will have two different latches to work with here. On the right side is for the actual lift gate, but on the left side, you can open up the glass independently. So if you have smaller items that you don't necessarily need to open up the lift gate for, you can throw them right in and it can be on your way. Or if you have longer items, you can leave them hanging out of the back of the vehicle. However, as a cameraman and as a automotive YouTuber, I would just stick somebody with a camera back here and get some awesome rollers of a vehicle that I'd be reviewing. But that, that's just me, but most likely you're definitely going to be using this for other purposes. But that's pretty cool to see. It's a nice retro style as well, which we just don't really see a lot in this segment. Now opening up the tailgate and taking a look at the rear cargo space, inside you're going to find right around 32 and a half cubic feet of rear cargo room. And that right there is why I cannot say the Bronco Sport is a subcompact crossover. Because most vehicles that are around this size are going to have right around 20 to 22 cubic feet, and in fact, some vehicles have around 18 cubic feet of rear cargo space. This outclasses pretty much every vehicle 
in this segment and in its price range for sure. 32 and a half cubic feet, to put that into perspective, that's around the same size as a Subaru Forester. So that's really impressive. Then with the second row seats folded, that space will run around double in size to 65 cubic feet. So this vehicle is practical, even though from the outside it looks small and even from the inside it seems a bit small, more subcompact. It's practical for everyday use and you can fit quite a lot of stuff back here and that's why I find this vehicle so impressive. Also back here on the right side of the rear cargo area, you are going to find another plug outlet. So now we have two overall in this vehicle. And then we also have a 12 volt outlet. And then on the left side, there's the button that will turn on your LED lights that are found on the tailgate. And just overall, the way Ford has designed the Bronco Sport, they've made it a very active crossover. This vehicle definitely fits the lifestyles of people who go camping or hiking um, every year, or people that just wanna go outside and enjoy the fresh air. That's what this vehicle is. That's what this, this crossover is. And that right there is why I think if you are going to compare this to any other vehicle on the market, it has to be a Jeep because this is definitely not your typical urban subcompact crossover. And then once you're done, just use the handle and the tailgate is very light actually. And now you can go off for your test drive. All right, so let's take the new Ford Bronco Sport Badlands out for a test drive. Once again, huge thank you to Acton Ford in Acton, Massachusetts for letting me experience this vehicle. I have been so excited to test this vehicle out. Uh, I think it's gonna be a winner and a hot seller for Ford, for sure. So for the first time on Boston Auto Blog, I am doing the test drive before the actual review. So this is the first time I'm experiencing the Bronco Sport, seeing it in person, experiencing the interior, and also driving it for the first time, never seen it before. So this is all gonna be raw emotion. This is all gonna be new to me. So as a car enthusiast, I'm really excited that we have the two liter under the hood because I was preparing for the 1.5 because uh, I thought that that was the only one that was gonna be here at the dealership. Uh, but this is a, a welcoming surprise and definitely something I'm looking forward to experiencing. Now, the first thing that really uh, pops out to me is the fact that the interior is very well refined. I was not expecting that at all because the Bronco Sport is supposed to be a rugged vehicle. It's not going to be something like, you know, a luxury car like an Audi or BMW or Mercedes Benz. But this is actually a really comfortable cabin that I find myself in. This is really enjoyable. Also, road noise isn't that bad either. And I know a lot of people have been raving about that. This vehicle is actually very well insulated. Now, of course, I am in the Badlands. I'm in the top trim, so that would definitely play a role into it. But I am very impressed uh, with the road noise, uh, with just the quality of the interior. Uh, I really do believe that uh, this is definitely worth the price of around $33,000, $34,000. Now, one of the reasons why I am gonna be very hesitant to say that this vehicle compares to a subcompact crossover or even some compact crossovers is because even though it's the size of, I believe, a Mazda CX-30, Kia Seltos, Nissan Rogue, and Jeep Compass, it doesn't really feel like that. A lot of people keep uh, comparing this to a Jeep Renegade, and I just don't understand why. Uh, I think the Bronco Sport is, it's own entity. It's a unique vehicle that we've just never really seen before, at least in the modern age, at least for 2020, right on the verge of 2021. We've never seen a vehicle like this, in my opinion. I just don't think we can compare this to anything that's on the market right now. Because I think if you're looking at other subcompact crossovers, even around $30,000, the Mazda CX-30 isn't going to sit this high up. I also have tons of shoulder room, but also it's not going to be as rugged. This is a rugged vehicle. Uh, it's an SUV. It's really a true SUV. I wouldn't call this a crossover in my opinion. But I do think this would compare very well with a Compass for sure. But this really feels more like a, a more pedestrian, more civilianized competitor to say a Jeep Wrangler if I was to go in that direction. I think that's maybe pushing it a little too far just because of the size of this vehicle. But I, I'm actually uh, really digging this. This is so much better than any subcompact crossover, compact crossover out there simply because of what the Bronco Sport um, 
is, what it, what it embodies. Uh, it's, a, it's essence of being a rugged vehicle. It, it's a vehicle that you want to take off road, that you want to get dirty, take on the snow. And you just don't have that with a lot of subcompact and even compact crossovers, which is why I'm, I am very hesitant uh, to really uh, compare this to anything else on the market right now. I think had Chevrolet come out with a Trailblazer that was similar to this, then I'd say it's a direct competitor. But I would definitely say for sure that this vehicle right here uh, is definitely unique. Now, who is actually going to buy a Ford Bronco Sport? I don't think this is really for the typical urban millennial. I don't even know if this is really going to draw in a 60 to 65 year old demographic. But what this will draw in is people looking to have some fun, people looking for a more maybe family friendly uh, oriented vehicle compared to say a Jeep Wrangler, uh, but also a vehicle that's more capable off-road than a Jeep Compass. So I really think that Ford is on a collision course with Jeep at this point, uh, with the Bronco Sport. And I have to say, uh, I mean, it's just because of, of recency bias. Uh, this is actually a, a pretty cool little vehicle here. You can drive this around town just like I am right now. Um, it, it's definitely a great all around daily driver for sure. But there's a lot of cool factor to this. You know, you do get a lot of stares. Uh, you get a lot of looks with this vehicle. And I think that's a great sign for Ford. I think just because it's the Bronco Sport, it's the Bronco nameplate, people know what this vehicle can do and, and its heritage. And this is a whole new generation. So let's do a quick acceleration here. This is pretty nice. Very nice. You feel the power. Now, as we head back towards the dealership, what I do want to point out here is how comfortable the ride is. I was not expecting that at all. Uh, just because when it comes to Ford products, I've driven plenty of them uh, over the last two to three years. I was just not expecting something to be this soft, especially where uh, the Ford Bronco Sport doesn't have a lower center of gravity. Uh, and especially with the bigger tires, it goes over these bumps, these Massachusetts roads very well. So to me, I am definitely impressed. Also, steering provides a lot of confidence and inspires a lot of confidence. And I, again, was not expecting that. Uh, to me, Ford has just never had uh, some decent steering in their cars in the past. But this is actually really impressive. This is what I want to see. Now, I don't think that this is going to be an indication of what we're going to expect from the Bronco, from the actual Bronco. Uh, but for a vehicle that's built on the Ford Escape platform, this does not feel like the Ford Escape. So for me, I am actually uh, really excited and happy that Ford, even though it's built on the same platform, it's a different vehicle. It's its own entity. So I totally love that. And then when we get to the size of the Bronco Sport, now it's about 173 inches in terms of length, but up front, you don't feel it. Now, of course, I'm gonna have to experience, or I've actually, I've already experienced the rear seats because the test drive comes after uh, the initial walk around, but for up front, you don't feel the size of this vehicle. It, it seems as though it's a lot bigger than in reality. So uh, I, I have to say, um, the reason why I have been so excited about this vehicle is because it was not going to be a typical subcompact crossover. It's not a compact crossover because it's too small for that, but I like to think of it as being maybe a baby, a baby Range Rover. I think it's a baby Range Rover. It really is. Uh, and that's why I'm so excited. This kind of brings me back to, and I was born near the end of the rugged SUV era. I'm 27 years old, so I don't remember a lot of the whole first Bronco, or actually the, the last Bronco that was made. And also a lot of the brands were moving more towards civilianized crossovers. But this is bringing me back to my childhood, and that's why I'm so excited and happy with what Ford has done here with the Bronco Sport. Uh, this is just a great vehicle uh, to tool around in around town, but also uh, if you live, live up in New England and you don't go off-road, you will need a vehicle like this to take on winter, and so far we've already had snow, so this is a vehicle that would definitely inspire a lot of confidence uh, as a driver up here in New England. So I am really truly impressed with what Ford has done here. I think they they've definitely have a winner on their hands for sure. And I think that if you are looking for a more rugged vehicle at around $32,000 or right around thirty-five, dollars really, 
Uh, and you're not really, you don't really want a Toyota RAV4. You don't want to have a typical subcompact crossover that all the young millennials drive. Then I think you might want to go with a Ford Bronco Sport because this is nothing like those vehicles. It, it's completely unique. And that's why after this test drive and even spending now about 15 to 20 minutes with this vehicle, I can't compare it with, with another uh, subcompact crossover in the market. And I wouldn't even be quick to find a competitor at this point. I think right now, we should just sit back and enjoy uh, what Ford has done here with this vehicle and you know hopefully find a competitor because I do think that if you are a person that doesn't want to be seen as driving a typical crossover like everyone else then the Bronco Sport is the way to go there's a cool factor to this vehicle and that's why uh, after this test drive I am super excited and pumped for what Ford has done so at the end of the day did the Ford Bronco Sport meet my expectations or let me down in any way, shape, or form? Because I've been waiting quite a long time to review this vehicle and take it out for a test drive. And after about three hours, I have to say, not only did the Ford Bronco Sport meet my expectations, it exceeded them in many ways. When it comes to the driving dynamics and handling, was not expecting the steering to be as tight as it was, but also it takes the bumps pretty well. Um, that to me was unexpected, especially where this vehicle does not have a lower center of gravity, but I was expecting to get thrown around and you just don't get thrown around. It's actually somewhat, dare I say, a bit luxurious, even though this vehicle is nowhere close to be luxurious at all, because with the interior materials they used, of course, I'm not expecting to experience a leather, a leather assist dashboard or soft touch padding throughout the interior. However, they gave you soft touch padding where your arms are gonna be. So I like the mixture of materials. Also, the leather seats are really nice and comfortable. And just when it comes to seating position, you sit pretty high up and it gives you that perception of being in a much bigger vehicle than in reality. And that might have something to do with the fact that the hood is squared off. But I just think that overall, with what Ford has done here with this vehicle, it's truly amazing. I think if I was in the market for a subcompact or compact crossover, I wouldn't have to feel embarrassed driving this around. This draws a lot of attention. People know that it's a Bronco or a Bronco Sport, and they're excited for it. It's a, it's a nice it's a nice way of, of bringing back retro styling in the modern era, and I totally like that. But also, more importantly, if this is any indication of what the real Bronco is going to be, then I am really excited for that vehicle. I think it's going to be a game changer in this market. Also, I think a lot of people are going to buy them for sure. It's going to be a little bit more exciting than maybe a Jeep Wrangler. I think Jeep has enjoyed many years, many decades of dominance, but Ford is now here uh, to take over uh, this market. And I think the Bronco Sport does a great job of being more family oriented, where you can drive around town and in, in the urban areas, but also give that ruggedness and that masculinity to the design of this vehicle that definitely inspires a lot more enthusiasm to buy a subcompact or compact crossover that we just don't see with other brands in this price range. So for me, I'm truly impressed with what Ford has done here. Uh, it's definitely exceeded my expectations in many ways. Now, of course, uh, when it comes to the second row seats, taller passengers are going to be pretty squished. But when it comes to the practicality aspect with 32 and a half cubic feet of rear cargo space, we just do not see that for a vehicle in this price range or segment or its size. And that's one of the reasons why I just cannot sit here after three hours and say that this, compare, this competes or compares to a Jeep Compass or a Jeep Renegade or a Kia Seltos. This is a very unique vehicle, and we have to look at it that way for sure until someone else comes around uh, in the next uh, few years or so and gives us a vehicle that's a true competitor to the Bronco Sport. But I truly believe this is a baby Land Rover for a person who's looking for a vehicle around thirty-two to $35,000. So I definitely like the value this vehicle provides, and I would definitely recommend taking this vehicle out for a test drive because I think in many ways, you're going to be very impressed. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys next time.